Hi guys, it's Jess. Welcome back to my channel and yes, I am back with another book haul video. I know I said that I wasn't going to be buying any more books for a while, but what can I say? I am a terrible person and I just can't help myself, but most of these books are all secondhand. I did get them quite cheap, so I don't think I actually spent that much. I think I probably spent under £30 in total for all of these books. I'm trying to be a little bit more resourceful this year and buy as many secondhand books from charity shops or other people as much as possible and then just donate them back when I'm done. But I have bought a few new books as well. So without further ado, we're just going to get straight into it. So one of the first books that I bought for myself was a book that I actually bought because I wanted to read it for Pride Month. And that is Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. So you will have seen this in my June TBR video. Um, I've wanted to read this book for quite some time. It's been on my TBR for at least a year um, and this is a book all about a girl called Simone who is bisexual and she also has HIV. Um, this is on a subject that I know a little bit about um, but I wanted to kind of read a little bit more about it and it's not really a subject that I have seen in young adult books that much. I've also heard that this book is very sex positive as well, which again is amazing and it's not something that is seen much in, not just in young adult books, but in books in general. So that's really exciting um, and I'm just really looking forward to delving into this. I might have already read it by the time this video goes up but I did get this book from an independent bookstore online um, and they left a little sticker saying thank you for supporting my small business which is so cute and so I'm not going to get rid of this sticker. I know people don't like stickers on covers and I don't normally but I just thought that that was so cute. Um, so yeah. So next we have a book that I actually pre-ordered back in March but then I totally forgot about it until it came through the post the day before it was released and it's a book that I am very excited to read and that is The Ruby's Curse by Alex Kingston. Um, and so obviously this is a Doctor Who novel and Alex Kingston played River Song in Doctor Who. River Song is a very complicated character and she was inspired partly by the time traveller's wife. Um, and yeah, Alex Kingston has written a book about her character, uh, River Song, and also about River Song's alias, Melody Malone. Um, and this is just all about Melody Malone, um, who is hired, <clears throat> excuse me, to find a stolen ruby, the Eye of Horus, um, which might hold the secret to the location of Cleopatra's tomb. But anyone who comes into contact with it dies. Um, and then River Song, who is the author of Melody Malone Murder Mysteries, um, is forced to find a reality-altering weapon, the Eye of Horus. But everyone who comes into contact with it dies. River doesn't believe in curses, but is she wrong? So kind of like the two storylines merge together, I guess. I don't know, but it sounds really fun. And I've been saying that I need some more Doctor Who literature in my life, so there we go. All right, so next we have some thrillers that I purchased from a lovely lady on Facebook. She was selling a bunch of books, um, all for a pound each. I didn't pay any postage because she was very local to, to me, so I just ended up driving around to her house and picking them up. But first we have The Girl Before by J.P. Delaney. So I actually do have this on audiobook and I actually have listened to most of the audiobook. I have like an hour or so of it left. I listened to it back in March, but I just never finished it because I'm a terrible person. What can I say? Um, but I think I did mention 
um, in my vlog that I did when I was reading that, that I was kind of struggling to concentrate on the audiobook. And I think that is the case with a lot of thrillers for me. Um, I tend to like to read them physically. So now I can read this physically. I might read it along with the audiobook as well. I don't know. But this follows two points of view. It follows Jane who moves into this house that's been built by an architect. Um, and she's living there under a bunch of rules that are kind of weird and very strict. Um, and she is finding out about the girl who lived there prior to her, Emma, um, and she was in a very similar situation and she ended up dead. Um, apparently she took her own life, but people are not really sure. Um, and it was kind of interesting, but I didn't really know what the fuck was going on because yeah, it was an audiobook and I just don't, I don't always take things in when it comes to thrillers and audio. So I'm very happy to have a physical copy um, and hopefully I will finish it this time. I also got Watching You by Lisa Jewell. Um, I read Then She Was Gone last year and I loved it. I loved it more than I thought I would. That book was a five star read for me. I was really impressed by Lisa Jewell's writing. It was really simplistic but also very effective. Um, and I read that book so quickly. I've heard amazing things about Lisa Jewell, so I'm really, really happy to have another of her books. I don't really know what this one is about, um, but um, it says that you're back home after four years of working abroad, you're keen to find a place of your own, but for now you're crashing in your big brother's spare room and then you meet the man next door. He's the head teacher at the local school, twice your age, extraordinarily attractive. You find yourself watching him all the time. You never dreamed that your innocent crush might become a deadly obsession or that someone is watching you. All right, so I thought it was written in second person there, but it's not. Um, but it sounds very stalkerish and I like stalkerish stories. Um, they make me very paranoid and not want to read them at night. <laughs> so I'm very interested in getting to this one sometime soon. Then we have Everything to Lose by Andrew Gross. And again, I don't really know what this is about, but I just picked up because the title sounded pretty cool. So let's check it out now. Um, Hilary Cantor's life is falling apart. She has lost her job, is about to lose her house, and is running out of money to care for her young son with Asperger's syndrome. But when Hilary is first on the scene of a fatal traffic accident, she finds a satchel full of cash on the car floor, enough to solve all her problems. Her split second decision has devastating consequences. Because the money she takes is at the heart of a conspiracy involving murder, blackmail and a powerful figure who'll do anything to keep the past buried. They don't just want their money back, they want Hillary's life, and that is of her son. All right, so this definitely sounds like something I would enjoy. Um, just imagine finding some money that has been acquired in not very nice circumstances and you're getting caught up in all of that. That sounds crazy. Um, I need to check this book out online and see what people are saying about it. But yeah, it sounds like it's something that I'm going to enjoy. And then lastly, from the same lady, I also picked up All Is Not Forgotten by Wendy Walker. I do have another one of Wendy Walker's books on my shelf that I haven't read yet, um, but I have heard good things about some of her books and then not so good things about some of her other books. I don't really know where this one falls, um, but it sounds pretty interesting. It's about Jenny who had been attacked but she wasn't able to recall what happened. Her parents and the doctors saw to that. Her mother couldn't prevent the terror in the woods, but she's done all she can to stop it ruining Jenny's life. The only thing that now bothers Jenny is the scar carved into her lower back, which she can't stop touching. But if Jenny can't remember her attacker, he can't be caught. He could be standing next to her right now, the one who just caught her eye, and he hasn't forgotten anything. So yeah, I don't really know what to make of it, but sounds interesting. All right, so the last five books that I wanna show you are books that I 
got from a book swap group on Facebook. So I've been part of this group for a while and I finally managed to swap some books with people. So I sent them some of my old books in exchange for some of their old books. And it's a pretty cool way to get books on the cheap. I only paid postage for these. Um, one of them is a thriller called There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. And this has been on my TBR for a long time. Um, and it sounds kind of cool. It's given me the really creepy Halloween vibes. Maybe it's just the cover. Um, but this one is about Makani and she thought she'd left her dark past behind her in Hawaii, settling in with her grandmother in landlocked Nebraska. She's found new friends and has even started to fall for mysterious outsider Ollie Larson, but her past isn't far behind. Then one by one, the students of Osborne High begin to die in a series of gruesome murders, each with increasingly grotesque flair. As the terror grows close and her feelings for Ollie intensify, Makani is forced to confront her own dark secrets. So it sounds really cool. Again, something that I enjoy in thrillers. The cover is just amazing. I love it so much. And I have heard pretty cool things about this. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get to it. Again, it's giving me Halloween vibes, so it's probably going to be around that time of the year, but don't hold me to that because I've been saying that about a lot of books that I own and I still haven't read, so we'll see, but yeah, I'm excited for this one. Then I picked up The Familiars by Stacey Halls, and I'm not really sure how I feel about this one um, because it is a historical fiction. It's set in Lancashire in 1612, um, but I've heard that it has witchy vibes. Um, I'm guessing so because, you know, the witch is familiar. Um, I guess it's about witches. Um, people do enjoy this book. Um, I know my cousin has read this and she really enjoyed it. Um, but I'm not really sure myself personally, but I don't want to rule it out like I want to give it a go. I do enjoy historical fiction sometimes, but there are certain time periods that I'm not that interested in, and this is one of them. I, I'm normally only interested in this kind of time period when it's about like royalty and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I want to give it a go all the same, but this is about Fleetwood Shuttleworth, what a name, um, is 17 years old, she's married and pregnant for the fourth time, but as mistress at Gawthorpe Hall, she still has no living child and her husband Richard is anxious for an heir. Then she crosses paths by chance with Alice Grey, a young midwife who promises to help her give birth to a healthy baby. When Alice is drawn into the witchcraft accusations that are sweeping the northwest, Fleetwood risks everything by trying to help her. As the legendary Pendle witch trials approach and Fleetwood's stomach continues to grow, time is winning out and both their lives are at stake. <laughs> is that a joke? <laughs> at stake? Well, you will be at stake if you're caught out as a witch, but um, yeah, I do like witch stories, so I think I might like this. We'll see, but it is a bit of a chunky book. That's quite intimidating, but I do like the cover. It gives me nice autumn vibes, so again, this might be one that I will save for Halloween time, somewhere around then. Another one that I could probably read at Halloween is The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. Um, obviously, everyone knows The Woman in Black. I've seen the film, I quite enjoyed it. Um, this is a very short book, but it, it obviously is a classic um, and a very popular ghost story. Um, but this follows Arthur Kipps, a junior solicitor, who is summoned to attend the funeral of Mrs. Alice Drablow, the sole inhabitant of Eel Marsh House, unaware of the tragic secrets which lie hidden behind the sheltered windows. The house stands at the end of a causeway, wreathed in fog and mystery, but, is, but it is not until he glimpses a wasted young woman dressed all in black at the funeral that a creeping sense of unease begins to take hold, a feeling deepened by the reluctance of the locals to talk of the woman in black and her terrible purpose. I'm really into ghosts at the minute. I haven't read many ghost stories lately. I really want to, so I might get to this earlier than Halloween. Um, but yeah, 
it obviously, as I just said, it's a classic, well-known ghost story, um, and it sounds really cool. I really enjoyed the film, so hopefully I will enjoy the book as well. Then another classic book, in my opinion, that I picked up in the book swap group was War Horse by Michael Morpurgo. Um, so this is a book that is very reminiscent of my childhood. We read this book in primary school. Obviously, everyone knows the film, which is a very emotional film as well. Um, but yeah, like there's no real reason to why I swapped this book with someone, but it just, it just takes me back to my childhood. I haven't read this book in so long and it would be really nice to go back and revisit it. Um, but this is a story of friendship in the worst of wars um, and it features a horse um, and it's all about like the soldier's relationship with the horse um, and yeah it's just it's a beautiful story really really loved it when I was a kid so I can't wait to feel like a kid again okay and the last book that I got from the book swap group which I'm not 100% certain about um, but I want to give it a go, is Normal People by Sally Rooney. Everyone loves this book. It's been out for quite a while um, and I've been tempted to buy it in the past but then I kind of held off because of the way it's written. I know that it doesn't have any speech marks which would probably annoy me. Um, I think the only exception to where it didn't annoy me was in Matt Haig's book, um, The Dead Father's Club, but that didn't annoy me because it was written from a kid's point of view and that's how a kid would probably write, so it kind of made sense. This one I'm not so sure about and I know it has irked some people, um, but I have heard great things about this book and so I am kind of tempted to give it a go. I'm not really sure. But this book follows Connell and Marianne who grow up in the same small town in the west of Ireland but the similarities end there. In school Connell is popular and well liked while Marianne is a loner but when the two strike up a conversation awkward but electrifying something life-changing begins. Normal People is a story of mutual fascination, friendship and love. It takes us from that first conversation to the years beyond in the company of two people who try to stay apart but find they can't. Um, so yeah, it's not something I would normally read, um, but I'm keeping an open mind, I'm open to trying new things, um, and yeah, like I said, I know a lot of people really enjoy this. I know there is a show as well, which I haven't seen, but I might watch it. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see what I think of this book, um, and hopefully I can let you know very soon. All right, so, <laughs> oh, that didn't go well. Those are all the books that I have acquired in the last few weeks. Um, all of them pretty much secondhand, well, apart from, apart from these two here. Oh gosh, <laughs> that's gone so wrong. I'm excited for most of these books, a little bit apprehensive about others, um, but please feel free to let me know if you've read any of the books that I've mentioned in this video and what you thought of them, whether you enjoyed them or not, and whether you think I will enjoy them or not. I would love to hear your opinions as always. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. It's a very short book haul this time. I'm pretty impressed with myself. Um, but please leave a cheeky thumbs up if you like this video and please subscribe to my channel so you can see more videos from me in the future. And I will see you all in my next video very soon. Bye guys.